So, Alan, can we start? Uh, yeah, we can start. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, you can start your video uh, so that I can start introducing you. Oh, okay. Am I visible now? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely fine. Okay. Uh, Are the students here? Yes, yes. They have already. Okay. Good morning, folks. Uh, yeah. So let me start uh, uh, with the introduction of our uh, today's uh, uh, young guest, I will say. So uh, let me introduce you, Mr. Alan Anto. I find great privilege in welcoming him for this interactive session for some tips uh, related to success in gate exam. So Mr. Alan Anto uh, is basically AR4 in recently held uh, electrical engineering exam. And presently he is doing masters in uh, ECE department uh, at ISC Bangalore. So I'll just have a reading over his uh, biodata. He is basically belonging to Kerala Thrissur Government Engineering College. He completed his 10th uh, studies uh, from Sri Durga Vilasam High School, Thrissur, Kerala. Then uh, 10 plus 2 he has uh, done in 2013 to 15 in computer science with a very handsome uh, score of 95.25%. Then uh, he has completed his uh, UG in electrical and electronics engineering from Government Engineering College, Thrissur. He has scored 9.42 CGPA and he appeared for gate exam and he scored uh, uh, 988 out of 1000. So he has scored AR4 and presently he is doing masters in electronic system engineering at ISC Bangalore, uh, which is my institute also. In 1994, I completed uh, 94 to 96, I have completed my ME from the same institute in high voltage engineering. So I uh, welcome uh, Alan uh, for this interaction. And, uh, Thank you, Dr. Sonia. The time is uh, yours and between you and you students. So oh, okay. I will just keep a track of whosoever wants to ask any question or interact. I will unmute that fellow immediately. And mm -hmm. if possible, uh, he can or she can uh, open his or her video so that okay. we can have a face-to-face -face interaction also. However, yeah, if you yeah. find some difficulty, I have already kept some questions prepared from my side. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, these questions will be common to all, more or less. So, mm. students can refer these things also for asking the questions. I hope uh, now it's the platform between Alan and you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sonil, for that nice introduction. And I see over 60 students have joined. I hope yes. all of you are from your third year or your final year. I don't know in which year are you right now. Yeah, they are mixed students from third same, fifth same, and seventh same. Oh. Okay, that's good. That's good. So I would like to start by giving a brief like awareness about Gate and bring you all to the same platform. Some of you might have already been oriented towards Gate. Some of you have been maybe looking for placements or some of you, some of you may, might be otherwise oriented. So I would like to bring bring you all to the same platform so we know what we are talking about and then we'll get down to business. So uh, Dr. Sunil, how do I share my screen? Uh, I will give you rights for presentation. Just a minute, please hold the... Okay, it's just four or five slides. I just like to make something on the screen, that's what. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see a share a button. Uh, yeah, the... yeah, I can, I can. Mm, okay. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so I would like to start not from here. Okay, I'd like to start from the opportunities through gate. Like why you should be thinking about gate? What are the things that you get through gate? Uh, so, so that you people like people from the first year or maybe from the second year, you might not have even maybe uh, because in my first year, I didn't even know about Gate. So I like to give you this thing, this introduction about Gate or the opportunities through Gate so that you get familiar with all this. 
So basically, it is an exam that you write. It was an exam that you write in your fourth year or after your fourth year. But in since uh, GATE 2021, they have added the opportunity that third year students can also attend GATE. So what are the opportunities to GATE? Basically, it's conducted by the IITs. So it's for your post graduation. It's for your masters. Basically, that's the thing that they uh, like. That's their motive of GATE. But since GATE is a tough exit exam after your graduation, a lot of other other organizations do recruit from GATE. So, for example, PSUs recruit from GATE, like uh, most of the PSUs, and they also conduct their own exams. That is true as well. Uh, and you can see, you can go for direct PhD also, not just masters. You can go for direct PhD, and you can do that in IIC, IITs, NITs. So basically, you would be preferring IIC or the old IITs. So that's it about MTech, and you can okay. Some some of you might not be that much familiar with research, so they can take it slow. They can first go for an MTech, maybe work in an industry for some time, and then they can move to research. Or some of you might already be into research. You can directly go for a PhD in IIC or IITs. And then there is you can you have an opportunity to go outside India also. Uh, there is masters from National University of Singapore, and there is NTU Singapore. These two universities, I think, I I don't know any more universities, but I I made a list of just these two. These two take an take gate score into consideration and they do recruit from gate. I think NTU Singapore is one of the top 10 universities in Asia. I guess so. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I, you have to validate that information. OK, I think I have. I think I heard that somewhere. And if you look, if you look at job opportunities, OK, you might not be fully into research or uh, further studying. So you might also look at job opportunities like uh, PSUs. PSUs are basically public sector units which are semi government like 51% of their share or more than 50% of their share is in the government right now and rest is in with private so you know when people talk about government organizations you know there are certain benefits that come along with that so you might be like you can get a technical job you can get a government job so these things are there for psu and they offer salaries in the range uh, 60000 to uh, more than 1 lakh per month so that's a good thing that you can do if you're not into further studies you can also go for a job. So GATE is not just restricting you to go to further studies. You can also pursue something. Uh, you can pursue your career. You can start off with a good job. It will get a, it will get you a nice starting salary. Also, if you want to, if you want to go to a pure government organization, there are organizations like Bark and DRDO which recruit from GATE. Okay, they take GATE score into consideration and they recruit based on that. Of, of course, there will be further interviews, further medical examinations, but uh, the baseline, the first, the first line of uh, filtering is through GATE. So these organizations take GATE into consideration. And also GATE is helpful for all the other technical exams because whatever technical exams are being conducted in India basically is adapted from GATE. Like for IRS, ICRB conducted by ISRO and CIL conducts their own exam. And BARC, there is an engineer and scientist exam for BARC. The engineering exam for BARC is mainly derived from GATE, previous GATE questions. So these are this, uh, these are a few of the opportunities that I just uh, noted here so that uh, you get to know why you should be looking at GATE or whether it's important. You might be thinking about something else also, not just GATE. You might be looking at placements. You might be looking at uh, non-academic things like you might be otherwise oriented to civil services or you might be looking at something else. I'm just showing this so that you can get an awareness and you know your options. That's all. Now we can move on to what's uh, further there in gate. Like uh, we can talk about if you are oriented towards gate, what you can do, how you can crack it, or all these things we'll talk about. We'll get to that thing. Okay, from this, if anyone has any doubt regarding your opportunities to gate, if they can interrupt me right now, or otherwise I'll move on. I request uh, attendees to raise their hands so that I can unmute them in the field if you get an opportunity. So if anyone has uh, want to interact uh, in between also, that is also possible. You just have yeah, to raise your hand. Also fine. Yeah. Or otherwise you can write uh, your message in chat box or in question answer session. Okay. I hope uh, we okay. can go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I'll go ahead. So this is not a presentation. This is just screenshot. Yes. I have to find the next image. Okay. 
uh, is my screen still there uh, at present uh, no okay i'll share again okay i just closed that image i'm looking at another image right now i haven't used this platform before that's why it might be a little uncomfortable for you guys but this okay okay is my screen shared right now yes yes okay so this is the basic gate exam for uh, for all the branches it is common all the branches uh, which are, which are technical at least this is common pat pattern for all the branches so basically it's a 65 questions exam you have 65 questions in in which 100 marks is distributed and you have 3 hours to crack it it's 180 minutes so that's uh, i think it's somewhere around less than 3 minutes for a particular question you can spend around 3 minutes for a question so this is the pattern that most of you guys are already aware about this just uh, spare me uh, i'm giving this introduction like for so that the first years or the second years can cope up with whatever is being told next and your eligibility is basically third year or higher higher your fourth year or third year you, you can write gate and earlier you could only write gate when you're in the final year so from gate 2021 they added the facility that you can attempt gate in the third year so you would be thinking if i'm writing the, my exam in the third year uh, what is a benefit for me because i can't go for a job in my fourth year or i can't go for a post graduation without completing my undergrad so you'd be thinking what is the benefit if i write a my gate exam in my third year so the thing is your gate score or gate rank is valid for three years for you to do your post graduation so you can do your you can go for masters even if you write gate in your third year and get a valid gate gate score you can still go for masters after you complete your fourth year okay and then there are three types of questions in gate one is a uh, multiple choice questions mcq the second one is multiple select questions and the other one is numerical answer type questions. So multiple choice questions, you already know all the aptitude exams that you have for your placements will be in multiple choice. Maybe there will be a descriptive type also, but multiple choice questions is what usually students expect, or at least they're familiar with that. Multiple select questions, on the other hand, will have more than one option. Like for multiple choice, you, there's, there'll be four options and one of, one of them will be correct. But in multiple select questions, there'll be four options still. But more than one might be correct. You don't know. Maybe one is correct. Maybe two is correct. Maybe all of them are correct. You don't know. And there, there is no negative marking for multiple select questions. There's just negative marking for multiple choice questions. And for numerical answer type questions, there is no options. You just have a text box in which you can enter some numerical data. Like you can enter 40 floating points or integers into that text box. The question will ask you to solve for some variable or so for some data. And they ask you to enter their text in or text or data in the numerical answer type box. So that, those are the three type of questions and numerical answer type doesn't come with a negative marking. OK. So the distribution of we'll get to the distribution of marks next. So basically, I said that uh, there are 65 questions and there are 100 marks. They are distributed through 100 marks. 15, quest 15 marks you'll get through aptitude. Aptitude is basic verbal reasoning or numerical reasoning. And there will be five marks five marks uh five one mark questions and there will be five two mark questions from aptitude and aptitude you can clear you can if you are reasonably good at uh, engineering aptitude you can get that 15 marks that 15 marks is like a ff free marks you can uh maybe you'll lose one mark at the most you'll lose one or two marks but uh, for most of the students this 15 marks is easy you can get that and the balance is 85 marks which is distributed through mathematics and technical subjects so mathematics typically has 13 to 15 marks and technical will take the rest of the 85 marks and inside this section there will be 25 one marks and 30 two marks two mark questions so overall if you look at this there will be 30 one mark questions that is 25 plus 5 one mark and there will be 35 two marks questions so this will make 30 plus 70 equal to 100 marks so this is the exam pattern that keeps on repeating it's been tried out it's been tested and it it works so this is the exam pattern that you can expect in the next year. You can go through the gate 2021 brochure. And I just confirmed that this is the pattern. You can go through that for further details. So this is the gate exam. And let me talk about the level of the gate exam. So you get an idea about what to expect. So the aptitude section would be uh, just general stuff. 
which you already you can you can reasonably get through aptitude without that much preparation you have to go through basics you have to go through 10 10 plus stuff 10 plus maths and all the uh, geometry all the fundamentals that you learn in 10 plus but you can reasonably go, go through it with further headache without for much headache okay you can easily score this 15 marks and for mathematics they keep it simple and a lot depends on the iits which is conducting that exam that year uh, so but generally they keep maths at symbol like maths will be just you can get get off with you can easily score reasonably good uh, with your undergrad knowledge on maths you can you don't need to uh, like go full on into math you don't need to analyze math you don't you can just uh, stick on with the regular notebooks that you have in your undergrad that works maths is not you don't have to worry about maths that much but uh, you have to consider that these are scoring subjects so all the students who who are preparing for gate will already be scoring very well in mathematics and aptitude so there is it's a double edged sword the, uh, at one time it is very easy but at the second time like if you miss a mark it will it will show up in your score your score may go down by significant amount if you miss a mark in mathematics or aptitude so you have you have to be mindful about that at the same time it is easy you don't have to sweat it, sweat about it then comes the technical technical section the technical section as far as electrical is concerned is evenly distributed you can say that it is evenly distributed among all the subjects and no no one subject has like a full on weightage every subject gets its own its own weightage and they try they try different combinations okay they don't stick on to a particular pattern every year uh, maybe they uh, one year maybe they go with the power systems as a main thing but at the next year they will not repeat that they'll keep on changing the pattern in technical part so you can't uh, focus on one subject you can't leave one subject in technical so most of the students uh, what they do is they leave out measurements because they think only one or two marks or maybe even three marks come from that they think that uh, the effort to co effort to marks ratio is way too low so i, I i'm not going to prepare, prepare for measurements most of the students think that but what happened this year is uh, they combined uh, things from analog and measurements and they asked questions on that like in gate 2020 the questions were asked on measurements and analog combined so you need a good fundamental of measurements and systems to answer those questions you just don't you can't get get away with just analog so things like that happen they try to make it unpredictable so that even the students with co without coaching get an edge so they try to keep it un unpredictable so don't leave out a subject if you are genuinely preparing for gate okay that's what i would recommend and i said it's evenly distributed but still you can find a, a slight uh, variations like uh, measurements i told you like usually comes for five marks uh, and all the other subjects come for 10 plus or minus two marks like control systems for example uh, has never crossed uh, i think 10 marks uh, power system usually comes from uh, 12 marks or something near that uh, all the subjects uh, usually come uh, 10 plus or minus two and there might be variations and you can it depends on further how you further segregate the subjects okay for example you can segregate machines you can separate machines into dc machines ac machines or inductions are synchronous you can uh, do that you can do transformers you can consider transformers as a separate separate thing then the weightage would vary the weightage would vary then but uh, as a whole the weightage is uh, more or less even uh, so this is the thing that i want to talk about the exam so you will get to know all about all these patterns all the te technicalities of the gate exam once you write mock exams so that's why mock exams are important because you will get to know how it is evenly spread out how how you should expect from which areas you can expect uh, score and mark and i need to talk about the level of the level of the questions that are usually come in gate so you can find uh, gate level questions you can't find gate level questions in standard textbooks naturally the questions in uh, standard textbooks are conventional type which means that you have to descriptively write the answer it won't be like uh, multiple choice or it won't be numerical answer type the, the questions in standard uh, textbooks would, would require you to write down uh, a procedure or go through step-by-step -step, uh, analysis to derive, to derive at some answers. But at the same time, you need to go through standard textbooks and questions related to that so that you can get an awareness about uh, what are the concepts that I have to learn so that I can get a good edge in gate. So these are the general things that you have to keep in mind, the question pattern and the question toughness. Uh, one more one more command about the toughness. Uh, 
generally 20% of the questions in gate are very tough very tough in the sense you have to spend 5 or 4 minutes at least to get a reasonably good answer or to be confident confident in your answer at least you need to spend 4 or 5 minutes 20% of the questions will be like that and for 80% of the questions you don't need to sweat that much if you practiced enough you can get away with 80% of the questions with relative ease you don't have to worry about that because once you practice, you'll gain confidence in those 80%. Like they'll be repeating patterns, even though the questions themselves do not repeat the concepts in, in the concepts or maybe the pattern the pattern of the theory gets repeated. So you can't you don't have to bother about the 80%. But uh, if you're aiming at a rank maybe below 100, or maybe if you're targeting a rank below 50, then the 20% you need to worry about that because these questions you cannot predict and it will be at another edge. You need to do some analysis. You need to make your own shortcuts. You need to make your own procedures to solve such questions. Basically, you need to analyze a little more than the undergrad level. So this is about the gate uh, exam as, uh, the, as the toughness goes. So now I would uh, like people to ask any questions they have about the gate exam or the pattern or any questions in general about the gate exam. Uh. I have made uh, some of the students as panelists. The rest of the rest of them can uh, raise their hands so that I can unmute them. So I have, please, uh, I request uh, Harshal Bhavne, Nitin, and Basan uh, and Utkars to take active participation and uh, please make your video on and you can ask any question. So Nitin, Harshal, if you have any questions, please ask those questions. Yes, sir. I, I have one question. Yeah, go on. Nitin. Is that Nitin? Sir? Yes, sir. I, I am Nitin. Sir, as a, uh, we are third year students, mm -hmm. as a going to give get 2021, what should be our approach since we are not completed with syllabus? Okay, so you are third year. You are currently in your third year. I think you are in your S5, right? Yes, sir. Uh, semester 5. Okay. So yes, I guess uh, all the basic subjects have been covered, like network, electromagnetic field theory, all the basics have been covered, like signal sensor system paper one, or control system paper yes, one has been covered. So has machines been covered for you? Sir, a half of a machine has been covered. Okay, maybe DC and transformers has been covered. Okay, so what you need to do is, uh, you need to cover the other, other subjects, like advanced machines, maybe signal or induction machines. Or maybe the paper two of the subjects, control systems paper two or signals paper two, you need to cover on your own uh, because you can't because uh, you'll be competing with fourth years and you'll be competing with people who have repeated for gate like they have took a drop so they have already covered all the subjects so you need to you can't ignore those subjects but the ends you have you guys have is you are already familiar with the basics right you are just covering the basics so your basics are fun your fundamentals are strong like networks and theory, networks and circuits and networks sorry circuits and networks is the fundamental for electrical engineering so once you are good in networks and circuits and networks you can pretty much uh, find all the other subjects are easy and the same goes with signals and systems and control systems if you are aware if you are uh, good in these subjects then you can pretty easily pick up the other subjects like machines with a good knowledge in network theory and electromagnetic field theory you can pick up machines quite easily you'll find that it is not that tough and while you prepare i i think while you prepare your classes might have been uh, your classes would be going on so you can take info from that as well you don't worry about uh, what has not been covered you try your best to get get that info that's all but remember that you guys have an edge as well because you are just covered the basics you are fresh in basics the folks who have took a drop and are repeating need to cover the basics again they have lost their they are lost in touch they are they are not in touch with the basics so you guys have an edge there so make use of that edge and uh, like uh, fight with your strengths and defend your weaknesses that's what i would say yes sir sir uh, we we have one confusion that means uh, whether we go for complete our syllabus or for test series uh, means uh, we will not get uh, much time to give test series so how can we adjust that okay uh, the time constraint is the major thing that anyone faces unless he's taking a drop people who took a taking a people who have taken a drop for preparing for gate uh, doesn't need to worry about uh, this time 
but people uh, students like you who are currently doing your uh, undergrad along with the preparation needs to be very efficient in your time management so you can look at this as an opportunity to optimize your time management because that will help you along in your like you uh, make priorities and choose what's what to do what what to do when so you can uh, train in that area and you can get a better hold of your time management i agree it is not it is tough it is not easy if it was easy everyone would be doing it the reason that it is tough is also the reason that it th there are more opportunities and the ones who pass this or ones who get through this exam has a very good opportunity so it is it is only fair that it is tough it is tough to uh, manage all the subjects and manage all the time so what i would recommend is uh, go for a balance like uh, a trade off here and there you can't go on full practicing everything you can't go on taking all the mock text because then you would not get time to prepare for the theory because the theory is vast as the electrical engineering syllabus for gate is the second most vast subject after mechanical engineering so you can't uh, you can't skip uh, you can't cover the theory if you focus full on in your practice and if you sit for theory you can't practice so make a trade off be judicious in your strengths and weaknesses make a trade off for example if someone is already well versed in the basics he can directly move on to the uh, he can directly move on to practicing questions and he can build up your build up his or her accuracy and speed and he can get a good mark or if one is already confident in his numerical solving abilities or uh, one is already confident whether that i get the theory and then i can deal with the questions you should focus more on theory because you are already confident that uh, once the theory is over you can get along with it and practice you keep it to a minimum so it lo a lot depends on you as well uh, yes sir sir one more mm -hmm. uh, sir as we are left with uh, three months and we have means lack of syllabus completion so mm -hmm. uh, should we go for whole subject a uh, whole syllabus or should select a few means uh, select uh, some of the subjects selected subjects oh, okay so ideally i would say students not to skip because uh, you will be some when i talk to students they will be usually targeting below 100 or below 50 so uh, for to get a reasonably good opportunity you need uh, at least below 1000 rank or maybe a score above 750 or 700 so usually i to i tell students ideally not to skip but let's be practical here you can't uh, go on completing the theory and uh, practice all the questions in 3 months time i know that and yes. for third year students you can't you can't uh, i think uh, cope with the academics and you can't uh, go on finishing the subjects that has not been covered yet so let's be practical and uh, stick to the subjects that are like the subjects that you get the maximum marks with the least effort should so ideally you should take that ratio and go to these subjects which you can score easily with minimum effort all the basic subjects you can get a full score if you uh, do, do a minimum effort like circuits and network signals and system i talked about this uh, all the basic fundamental subjects you can score a lot with minimum effort because you are already well versed in the theory well versed in the basics but subjects like uh, power system and machines for the same amount of marks you need to spend a lot of time on these subjects because the syllabus you know is very vast so keep this in mind and uh, uh, maximize your returns that's what i would say for one minute if you are spending you should get some returns for that so maximize your returns prepare in such a way that whatever time you are spending you are getting the maximum marks for that so go to subjects that are easy scoring first and it 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 depends on you okay because i can't uh, tell that you should go through these subjects because it is easy scoring some student might be very strong in electromagnetic field theory he can uh, get a good mark in electromagnetic field theory or some other subject by relatively spending a little time on that so that depends on you if you are strong in machines go with machines make that your strong point and uh, practice more questions on that you will get more score on that and basically i would say uh, if you are that desperate you can skip uh, measurements because usually it never crosses above five marks but there are situations like i said where they combine stuff and ask ask students questions related to that so if you you can skip that you can take a uh, like you can judge your risk and you can take a judge you can take a risk based on that based on your judgment but remember that it will be a risk to skip any subject and you have to make use of your time so uh, be practical and uh, do only those subjects which you think is worthwhile worth your time at least for the third year for the fourth year you can you get ample time you can do that you can complete all the subjects 
for so for third years you can uh, you, you can trade off that but for fourth years better complete all the syllabus yes sir thank okay. you sir any yeah yeah sure is it was it nitin yes sir okay so any questions related to the gate pattern as such like uh, the questions i guess most of the third years and fourth years would already be familiar with that so uh, spare me uh, i am asking to first years or second years good morning sir this is harshal bawne yeah sure go on harshal hello harshal am i audible to you yeah good morning harshal hello harshal am i audible Harshal, can you hear? Uh, can, uh, is it audible? Hello. Yes, yes. You are you are audible. Harshal, your voice is coming through, but I guess you can't hear my voice. Is that the thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, he wouldn't know. Okay. Now you now you can hear, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Sir, uh, I want to know that uh, how you uh, revise your uh, subjects. Oh, okay. Actually, I am coming to the entire strategy part because I just wanted to get everyone on the same page that everyone should be aware about the gate pattern. And then I think I was thinking that then I'll move on to the strategy and the preparation, the revision, mock exams, all that later. Just covering. If any doubts you have about uh, the exam pattern as such, we'd be done with that. I guess uh, that was my intention. But anyway, since you asked about revision, I'll tell. I tell something about that right now, because uh, the revision you have to be, you have to like it depends on your memory. Like if you find something, if you find a subject very interesting, or if you if you are genuinely interested in that subject, like you 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 get fun when you uh, search through that subject or uh, do problems in that subject, then you don't need to revise that subject. That would be there in your memory. You can take it for granted. If you like yes, a particular okay. subject, you can take that for granted. and the thing is uh, you won't like every subject in in especially in electrical engineering because there are a wide variety of subjects you won't be finding everything interesting some subjects you take for you sub, some subject you do it because it's there that's all you don't uh, commit to that so in such subjects or in subjects that you don't generally like you have to revise a lot because it will it will not stay in your head how how long it stays in your head generally depends on your interest if you are motivated enough it stays in your head you can get uh, get through without revising that much you can solve problems and it will get refreshed automatically but for tough subjects like a uh, lot uh, subjects with lot of formulas uh, power electronics was very tough for me because there were a lot of formulas in that and uh, i tried i tried to cover power electronics at the very end i was finding it very tough for myself but a lot of students do find it very easy It's a personal thing, so uh, I had to revise all the formulas daily. Like what I do is I allot one or two hours because I had the entire day. Unlike you, unlike you guys who are already doing your undergrad, you will have at most four four hours of your day. Why, if you are preparing for gate seriously, if you are just uh, lapsing through gate, I think you would not spend more than one hour per day. But I seriously uh, suggest all of you to consider gate as a good option. If you have some other backup in hand, then it's fine. Don't worry about it. but if you are seriously spending on gate if you are seriously focused on gate spend at least 3 to 4 hours as you are already uh, learning your near undergrad or covering the undergrad so what i would suggest is allot half an hour every day to revise just to revise don't do problems don't uh, take up new stuff just revise make notes make short notes and start reciting not reciting i would say you don't have to you don't have to take a text or you don't have to take a note just uh, sit by yourself without uh, any material and try to internalize or try to remember or recall all the formulas or all the important concepts or maybe even try to recall the questions as such like if some question you are finding it difficult difficult try to recall the question every once in a while so that it gets refreshed so i what i do is i had time so i spent 2 hours per day just for revision and i go through a cyclic list of subjects and i go through one or two subjects every day and i start recalling all the formulas this is uh, without referring to the note you have to do this without referring to the note revision is not reciting revision is uh, recall it should not be reading it should be something that comes from your mind it should not be something that comes from the book so while revising make make sure that you are not just recognizing that you already know but you are actually recalling something that you already know okay so revision uh, you should uh, yeah you should spend ideally 20% of your efforts in preparation you should be spending on revision 
the rest 50 percent i would say say you spend on your previous gate or solving the questions previous gate questions and the balance 30 percent you can spend on analyzing all the all the difficult topics note making having shortcuts all that so 20 percent you should spend on revision specifically a lot uh, time per day or maybe if you cannot uh, spend a lot time per day a lot time per week like one or two hours per week i'll i'll be revising yes sir. is that clear okay Harsha. so now i think i, I think uh, all the students are up, up to date on this uh, gate thing because everyone is familiar with gate i i think uh for the first years and second years i think i i'll move on because you guys might have already been aware about gate i misjudged you there i thought you guys wouldn't have been that about gate okay so i see no doubt so i'm moving on so i need to share my screen again yes yes ellen you are already a presenter so you can once again go to share a screen okay I, i'll share my screen so before give me a moment i need to open yes, something yes. Okay, is my screen visible right now? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, this question everyone would have had in their mind at one point of time or the other is whether to take coaching or not. Uh, because uh, most of the students, you would have seen some of your seniors take coaching. My, I myself took coaching. So you would have this question whether I can crack gate without coaching or with coaching. So I, 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 I say that coaching is not absolutely necessary. It, it will help you definitely. You can see that there, there is an edge there with students with coaching, but it is not mandatory that you take coaching so that you can get a 10 that's a uh, single digit rank or something. Because I have myself uh, seen my colleagues in IAC or uh, friends from other colleges as well have cracked a gate with single digit rank without coaching. So the main thing that a coaching will give you is the motivation. Okay, because you are you'll be around your peers who are same at the same time preparing for gate. So you'll get a pre, uh, peer pressure, sort of, sorry. You'll get a peer pressure so that you can work on gate, you'll be consistent in your studies. So that is a major thing. That is a major thing that uh, coaching will provide you with. And the other thing is you don't have to worry about collecting materials, sorting through textbooks, sorting through questions. You don't have to worry about collecting all the questions so that you can practice. Uh, so this is the thing uh, that uh, a coaching will provide you. Uh, did my video stop in between? Yes, yes. Is it fine right now? But no, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Some bandwidth issue is there. Yeah. Please forgive me for that. Okay. Oh, so uh, you need a uh, bandwidth issue. Uh, Alan, you can uh, switch off your video for some time so that. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's an uh, option for you. Yo. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. So I need to uh, stop video. Okay. Is my video off right now? Hello. Hello. It is off. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I was talking about coaching. So coaching, definitely. I agree that it would give you an edge. And if you, if you guys can't hear, hear me, you can talk. Okay. You can speak up. You can interrupt me in between. Okay, moving on. Uh, for coaching, it will give you an edge, and uh, they'll already be having test series, so you don't, you don't need to worry about collecting the textbooks, collecting question banks or notes. So without coaching, also you can do. If you just have to manage all these things by yourself, like you need to collect materials, you need to collect textbooks, you need to collect question banks, you need to collect uh, test series, or you can subscribe for some coaching test series. Just the test series. Don't subscribe for classes. You can do that. And also, you should uh, schedule your time on your own because if you're taking a coaching, normally they will have a schedule and you'll, you'll try to align your schedule with that. So with coaching, the students will already be having a schedule and will be optimized for that. And all your materials will be up to date and it will be just focused on all the relevant things and not just uh, other details which are not required for gate. So this is the thing you have to worry about. And 
you should make a extra effort to collect all this if you are not taking coaching it is fine perfectly fine and it is doable without coaching as well so i would like to break down all your entire preparation into three major things uh, one is a uh, note making note making or analysis as i like to call it is like takes up 30% of your preparation you need to spend 30% of your efforts on note making or analyzing analyzing uh, complex problems like i said 20% of the gate uh, questions would be would be very tough or would be hard i wouldn't say very tough it's doable but it is, would be take it would take you some 4 minutes or 5 minutes to crack that so that that stage depends upon your note making or analysis skills so 30% of the time you would be collecting materials you would be deriving shortcuts you would be uh, finalizing standard operating procedures so standard operating procedures are what i call as fixed methods some questions directly nicely fit in, uh, sorry nicely fit into certain patterns for example in machines uh, sorry in exam for example in power system usually a question comes in per unit where you like to convert where you would where you would be asked to convert all the a uh, machine or a uh, transformer values into per unit and there will be some question based on that maybe they would ask the uh, overall per unit impedance or something like that so that question questions like that directly fits into a set of pattern you can expect such a question to come every year so you can make standard operating procedures where you would uh, upon getting the answer sorry upon getting the question you would not waste time thinking about it because you already expecting such a question you already know what to do so this is a important thing of note making where you would identify such questions and you would make notes according to that or you would analyze complex problems so that the next time you see those you can you don't have to think about it it's already there in your note or it's already there in your mind so this will take care of the 20% of the hard questions that you will face in gate the next part is revision which i told is takes up 20% of your preparation if you are not doing revision and everything else is just a waste of time if you are just if you are only practicing problems or if you are only analyzing stuff or if you are only going through theory it it is not going to be useful unless you revise and keep it up to date in your mind because it has to come out come out of your mind you have to deliver within a few seconds once you see a question you have to relate with the knowledge that you already gained so revision is important so what i did is i'll talk about revision i talked about revision okay i'll talk about revision uh, after some time so uh, right now i'm just talking about the broad three broad three categories okay and next uh, third category is practicing problems which takes up 50% of the gate 50% of your preparation you would be spending on just practicing previous gate problems uh, this is very important because a lot of students misjudge the importance of practicing previous gates they just uh, do a few examples and get get over with that but i i urge you to take this into serious consideration practicing the previous gate is a major part of great preparation so start collecting problems start, start collecting questionnaires sorry question banks and then start practicing as much problems as you can and a best strategy that i usually ask uh, tell students is to balance these things sorry balance these things uh, for example if you are so much focused on revision or if you are so much focused on practicing problems and you keep ignoring the other stuff like you are not revising you are just solving problems you are not uh, looking up anything new you are just solve going on solving problems that is not a good strategy i would say because you need to keep in touch with all the subjects and all the concepts you need to keep in touch with the hard questions or the difficult ones so you just you can't get away with practicing problems 50% of the time you can spend on practicing problems and one more important thing that i would like to say is once you make a plan like once you have a strategy you can think of it like this you have a slider for three things you have a slider for note making you have a slider for revision and you have a slider for practicing problems tune these sliders according to your strengths tune these sliders according to your strengths or weaknesses so once you achieve at a correct balance of these three then don't mind what others are doing others are doing things because it's suited for them it might not be suited for you because if you start looking at others you will change your strategy by the week because you will be uh, constantly concerned about whether he is getting is getting more uh, efforts he is doing more efforts or whether I, i am doing justice to my subjects you will be concerned about that you will not actually start to solve something or you will not actually spend time on preparing so once you make a plan stick to that and don't mind what others are doing
so this is the general thing there are other things obviously that uh, that uh, comes under preparation like mock exams is an important part but that comes under practicing problems so i gener i what i did is i aggregated all the things that you have to do into three main things so everything that you do everything that you do for preparation will come under one of these things so i will now move on to the next thing that i have to talk about uh give me a moment i need to take something i'm i'm stopping sharing and you can ask a doubt if you have any doubt regarding this what i just said uh devendra you have got some question you have raised your hand devendra am i audible yes sir you can ask the question in between yeah okay sir okay sir okay devendra you still there i can't hear you yes sir i am here okay you have some question you can go for that so just i want to ask you something that uh, how to manage time yeah uh time management okay uh, so there is this theory on habits and behavior uh, i don't know the details but generally to make a habit to make a new habit you need to spend uh, 21 days doing the same thing for example if you if you need to go to the gym if you start if you want to start uh, a habit of exercising you need to go to the gym or do some other activity right but it won't be a habit unless you do it continuously for 21 days so the first 21 or so days would be very tough you need to get up you will be constantly nagging about it you will constantly be uh, worried about it but once you cross a one month period or maybe a 21 uh, days period it will form a habit for you the same goes for whenever you need to remove a bad habit uh, is the noise coming from my end no 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 okay. my, from there is no voice okay i hear a voice i don't know what it is okay so i will i may yeah you you do that okay fine okay so time management uh, is la has largely to do with your habits because you will be uh, doing uh, same things or uh, you will be major, majority of your time during your day you will be doing the same things that you did uh, yesterday or maybe a week before so you need to first get rid of all the bad things all the bad habits that you do and the, at first the first 21 days will be very tough for example if you have a habit of spending like one hour on social media or some other platform or maybe gaming uh, you would be spending time on that and you would be finding it hard to get rid of that habit but the first one month or so you have to adjust with that you have to brute force your way out of that for the first 20 or so days and after that you can start to see the results once you uh, go along with that plan for 20 or so days you will get to like uh, you'll get adjusted with that and it will form a habit so that you won't take it up again so that's how you remove a bad habit and that's how you cultivate good habits so you yeah, if you cultivate good habits and remove the bad habits your time management issue would be gone for example if you spend half an hour or more than half an hour on youtube or something else you can get rid of that by brute force you just need to work on that consistently for 20 or so days and naturally you would uh, you would be out of that habit and a more thing important thing about time management is there is this problem in computer science that people say usually because the more time you spend in optimizing your task is the less time you actually spend in doing your task so you should on you should only optimize so much you should not optimize everything in your life so that you spend time only in optimizing stuff spend time optimizing spend reasonable time amount of time don't uh, over analysis anything don't do over analysis of everything and you will end up not doing anything you will end up planning a lot but not doing anything so you need to optimize for some things uh, re- leave everything else as it is and just uh, continue with that and one more thing i would uh, suggest is make incremental changes in your life or in your habits or in your routine Incre- by incremental changes i mean uh, don't uh, st- don't say that from tomorrow onwards i'll stop everything or from tomorrow onwards i'll full on prepare for gate the issue is that usually that will no, never uh, work for the long term because you will be doing that for maybe one week or maybe you will be doing that for three days and then some relative calls you okay let's go there or let's go here or let's go watch a movie you will be going there and you will be out of that habit so make incremental changes on a da- daily basis and uh, that will go a long way that is a good long term strategy to cultivate something like for one day you think that i'll not take my phone for more than one hour you think like that for the next day you do that 
and for the next day make it uh, i'll not take my phone for 50 minutes make it like that or you make incremental changes you get what i mean right so by incremental changes and brute forcing your something that you need to do into a habit you can actually get a lot of time i would say you will get a match you would be actually feeling time plentiful if you do start to do that because uh, you can't you don't uh, we can't even estimate how much time we actually spend in unnecessary things. Uh, like you, uh, you don't have to even get rid of all your personal commitments, all the other things. You just have to get rid of all the non productive things that you do. You, you don't have to be extremely introvert or bookish, I would say, to get a reasonable amount of time. You just have to get rid of all the nonsense things that you do. That's all. So is that clear, Devendra? And that goes for everyone else as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. You are right. Yeah. And then, uh, there are Thank two you. questions from uh, the faculty itself. Uh, faculty is also joined, so I will request Ankur Gupta sir and Advara sir. I have made you panelist. Uh, please ask the question, Ankur sir and Advara. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yes, 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 Ankur. Uh, very good morning. Uh, just uh, uh, on the behalf of a student, I will ask the only one uh, thing from your side. Uh, mm -hmm. If we are uh, preparing for the gate or some IS exam, mm -hmm. what we feel that the student will feel that at last moment, what they will do is so that they will crack the exam. See, in okay. the last stage, they will get uh, maybe they lose their confidence regarding the paper. If they are solved the new patterns, mock test, after that, they will get some kind of demoral uh, demoralized they themselves. Okay. So at, at that stage, what we will be expecting from the students so that they will crack the exam? Okay, uh, so this is an issue of motivation and consistency. Yes. Because if you are sticking to your schedule, that if you are largely, and if you are, some students even are way ahead of your schedule, way ahead of the schedule and they feel confident. Some students may be lacking in their schedule or maybe in other, in other areas, they might try some exam and they are not they are not getting the expected results, so they lose motivation. So uh, this is an issue of I would say consistency and motivation. So mo motivation, I uh, I cannot uh, tell you a hard and straight role for motivation because that is high uh, high like personal thing, uh, pretty much personal thing. So what you can do is uh, you can schedule your time properly. If you schedule your proper time proper uh, your plan your plan long term plans properly. Then make sure that you are meeting that schedule or making meeting that goals in the reasonable amount of time, so that you will not feel uh, you will not feel that you are losing time later on. For example, if you are making a plan that you are that you will complete a particular subject by the next week, first uh, decide that whether that's a reasonable plan or something like whether that is actually practically possible to complete that subject with one week, because at the end of the week, if you haven't completed that then you will uh, naturally feel demotivated about it. You will naturally fe be feeling that this is not for me. I couldn't do something like that. And the thing about this competitive exams is a lot the, that competition will increase uh, year by year and more and more people are uh, like writing these such exams every year. And what naturally happens is you will be expecting you will always underestimate the competition. That's what uh, students uh, usually do. You know, uh, I don't think uh, anyone overestimates the competition. Usually students underestimate and what ends up happening is they'll think that this uh, this much effort of uh, this much amount of effort is enough or this much amount of I'll, I can get away with this much effort. So students usually do that and I would suggest is never un underestimate uh, the exam. Some some year the exam might be really easy or some questions even might be really easy. But at a large, a lot of students are attempting this. So the competition is tough. Even the exam might be easy, but the competition yeah. for the exam might be tough. So, and another thing to keep your motivation at the very end is that no matter how much you prepare, there will always be a next thing to do. Like no matter how much you prepare, how much questions you do, you do a thousand questions, there will still be another book to solve. There will still be some other question to do. There will still be some other concept that you missed. So you need to slow down towards the end of your preparation, ideally, because a lot of uh, gate uh, student, uh, I know a lot of students who follow the similar strategy because uh, because of past experience or some other things, they usually slow down towards the end of the preparation so that they get comfortable with whatever they know. Uh, first, get comfortable, get confident with whatever you know, and uh, keep 
everything else that you don't know keep it at a like take it as a challenge but don't beat your head on that like if you are preparing for gate and you completed 80% of the preparation and you are nearing the end of your preparation like you have two more weeks don't beat your head around the rest of the 20% that you have still to prepare but keep uh, fight with your strength your strength is the 80% and your weakness is your 20% that you didn't cover so fight with your strength and defend your weaknesses don't think of that 20% as uh don't think of that 20% and don't be like very demotivated thinking of what you didn't do rather feel motivated for something that you that you already did that's what i would say thank you alan yeah sure adwari sir yes sir yes sir uh, uh first of all uh, i would look, i would like to uh, thank uh, professor nagrai sir uh, for arranging uh, such a, a good uh, a platform uh, for a student to understand how how to prepare for gate examination and the same i i would like to thank alin uh, to uh, communicate with the student and uh, to give some uh, practical uh, exposure or practical approach to uh, clear this gate ex examination so uh, alin I, i would like to ask uh, at what stage student have to start uh, their study for gate examination yeah the sooner the better is i would what i would say but generally in your first and second year you would be like in a like you would miss your college life if you start to focus on gate too much that's yes. what i would say for the students but yes, uh, yeah for serious, if you are taking your that depends on how much you value your professional life and your personal life like if you are so much focused on your career then ideally you should start from the first year but, but yes. that's a little too early to uh, start but if you want to get a good balance uh of like uh, your college experience and your uh, preparation or your future then i think uh, uh, at the end of third sem maybe is a good time to start in the second year the half of second year is a good time to start so where you would be covering the basic subjects and you can start from there because you will be you can start your preparation from there you can already like it will give you an edge in the academics also but your undergrad also it would it would give you an edge uh but the first year i i would say it, it is too early to start but you it's not there is no rule such that you can't start in your first year you'll just be sacrificing some college level experience or some of your personal life you, because the exam is very tough you need to spend consistent amount of time on that you need to spend at least one hour on a daily basis but if you if you are starting from an early age uh, early early level like if you are starting from a first year then perhaps in the first year you can take it slow maybe just allot 5 5 or 4 hours per week even You, you are good with it just have research about the uh, subjects get aware about all the subjects like in the first year you won't be aware about what subject is which and what what is being done there just get aware about what's all there is what's all there is i think your undergrad uh, like whatever you do in your undergrad would be enough to cop up with gate in the first year and first year and maybe even in the second year uh, and if you are too much serious about gate start preparing in the mid of second year that is after your third sem okay thank you and sir uh, elin uh, what about the uh, test means how 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 uh, to go through the test series means uh, okay. can you suggest some uh, test series uh, where our student can go and uh, get some practice there yeah okay so uh, there are general test series for all like uh, there are some brand of test series that is a uh, general like not too focused about electrical engineering but they release test series for all the streams of engineering but there are some specific ones also like uh, creatrix is a good platform for uh, exams specific to electrical engineering their faculties are like uh, more focused towards electrical they they started with electrical so they will be naturally more focused on that so test series by creatrix that i can i don't think yeah they might have merged with gate academy i don't have info on that but that is a good platform or if you want to go with general uh, coaching institutes you can go with may dc or ace test series that is a good option there a lot of people will be attempting may dc test series and you can go with that because you will be getting to judge your uh, how, how competitive you are or at what level you are right now so test series definitely is a major part of your preparation and you you need to increase your test yeah, you need to attempt more and more test series as you go through go through the preparation like when you are starting your preparation you do, you naturally you should be not doing any test series at least not do any full length test Uh, at the very beginning of your preparation go with subject wise tests at the beginning of your preparation and only do a test only take a test if you are already covered covered that subject 
like don't do a sub don't uh, take a test for a subject which you not already covered because after you cover that subject you will not get the chance to be fully new to that test series so cover once cover a subject and go through the subject wise test and as far as the mock test is con uh, concerned you should go to the mock test only after you can uh, after only after you finish all the syllabus or only after you finish the syllabus as far as you can go go to the full length test but the subject wise test you can uh, start off along with a particular subject once you finish a subject you can start a subject wise test or the mock generally what i did i'll tell you what i did i went along with the subject wise test along with my preparation so up to, uh, by december i was pretty much uh, like confident in most of the subjects so i started the full length mock test but don't get demotivated if the first few tests will give you really low marks because that happened to me also the first few tests will generally be low scoring exams so don't worry about that uh, uh, you need to consistently do up to 12 or 15 uh, mock exams so that you get a reliable reliable uh, level of uh, info on how how at what level you are you'll get an idea of what level you are only after you attempt about 12 or so test series and i would recommend to do that at december only like after december at least well, thank you. I have a question Mm -hmm. uh, because long back I appeared for gate exam uh, and my strategy at that time was quite uh, different and the time mm -hmm. was also different. Uh, but I faced one problem uh, during uh, all the competitive exam, mm -hmm. whether our focus should be on solved problems or unsolved problems. See, uh, uh, in books there are a lot many good solved examples as well as unsolved. But uh, okay. as far as my capability is concerned, I always get a doubt whether I will increase my capability by solving unsolved questions or solved questions. Because nowadays, because of test series, a lot of uh, uh, solved solutions are there. And I have oh. seen that students don't get much out of it because the efforts required for getting the solution is the actual learning. As far as I am the faculty, I, I know that uh, uh, when you go through some unsolved example, you put a lot many efforts. For example, searching for formulas in which book it exists, where is the hint for that? So that effort, in, during that effort, I came across several more things. So that is a learning I get through unsolved examples. But when I get the ready-made solutions, I know that, uh, okay, for uh, 10 minutes, uh, I, I will try. And if not, uh, solution is always there. So it uh, really helps or does not help. I really don't understand. And whether this, uh, this generation, uh, new generation, uh, picks up that thing or not, I really don't know. Okay, so when I prepared, I generally had all all the solved problems. But the thing I did is I will never look up a problem if even if I don't get. Like if I if I can't solve a problem for more than one week, then usually I look that up. Or maybe if I get a wrong answer and I'm checking for the solution, then if I find that something is amiss, I look for the solution. I I, I only go for that if I get I don't get a solution in the long term like for one week or something but usually uh, the thing is you have to do your own research for, to solve a problem that will not only help you to analyze stuff but you'll also find other useful information like uh, if you are solving a problem on control systems say for example just for example sake i don't want to make it technical if you are sol if you are solving a questions on uh, the uh, transfer function of something and you're finding one particular case where whatever you learned doesn't apply like I, it, it happened for me that I learned a lot of new information just on that one particular question, because that question was an excep exception in which whatever I learned doesn't apply. So I need to do my own research and I, I needed to do my own research. And I looked up a lot of books to find the, uh, you know, critical case where it doesn't apply. So by doing questions like that, you get extra info uh, other than doing all these uh, standard questions that which already have a solution. Once you don't get it, you go through that because uh, that will not be helpful to you as much. And the other thing about these exams is these exams are not ideal. Uh, like gate is not uh, like it is close to ideal, but it's still not ideal because the pattern you can predict. So the edge comes in practicing the previous questions of that exam for IES as well as uh, gate. The pat uh, the the, the students usually what they do is they take advantage of the non idealities in the exam like some pattern is repeating or some theory is being focused too much they take advantage of the weaknesses in the exam 
they get that by practicing the previous questions of that exam so generally what i would recommend people to do is take the previous exams sorry the, take the previous questions and go through all the previous questions and then if you are once over with all the previous questions then go to unsolved problems but while solving previous questions don't look up the solution once you are not able to find it do your own research and come up with a solution if you are not getting a solution even after one month or maybe one week of spending your time on that question then maybe you can check on your solution but uh, i yeah that's what i would say yeah that's a very good uh, thing uh, which you have highlighted because uh, during my time uh, i focus more on unsolved problems and mm -hmm. as you said uh, that gave me an edge uh, uh, over others uh, but at that time the number of students appearing uh, as much well as yeah. 4000 student in the year uh, 1994 and now it is uh, touching up to 2 lakhs yeah yeah that is the exact issue that i mentioned about because a lot of students will take advantage of things if you are not taking advantage of things then you will end up even like it is not an ideal situation you should not take advantage of the exam weakness or exam pattern but in the situation as we are in right now or a lot of students do take advantage of the patterns in the exam and the previous gate questions they, sometimes the previous gate questions repeat uh, by changing the numerals so a lot of students take advantage of that but so ideally you should go through all the previous gate questions and then move to new questions but new questions already will give you like your returns from a new question will be much higher than already solved question because you will be learning a lot of stuff on that yeah that's right yeah it's a very good point everyone should note that the returns are better uh, when you go for unsolved question but at the same time your investment should not go waste if you don't look at uh, solved is it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's correct it's a uh, it's a generation of optimization i would say yeah every but everyone is doing what they can yeah yeah continue i'll end with your uh, presentation okay uh, so i was talking about uh, the three main aspects of preparation which is note making revision and practicing problems so uh, i already talked about uh, practicing and note making let me be uh, let me cons uh, let me compress all that i said about practicing and note making uh, learn all the concepts first of all and during the time to learn concepts you can uh, le like learn minimum amount of questions like once you are learning the concepts don't uh, start like once you learn the concept don't take the previous gate questions and start solving that all that during the time to learn concepts you can learn minimum amount of questions just to the examples when you learn concepts just stick to the examples stick to the simpler cases don't take uh, trivial cases or don't take uh, edge cases and uh, start preparing for that when you learn some concept for the first time just stick to examples and uh, prepare notes for that subject if you don't have already and uh, ideally you should prepare notes for everything but due to time constraints you can you cannot afford to do that always and after you are done with a concept on a particular topic then you can move to the advanced questions generally the examples would be not too advanced it will be very low level or very easy examples so that you can get a grasp of the concept first and after you get a grasp of the concept you can move on from the example to the advanced questions normally in standard textbooks at the very end there will be a section called miscellaneous topics or miscellaneous examples so there you can find really advanced unsolved questions a particular to that concept and you can start solving from that you can also take really good questions from previous gate or you can start analyzing more complex concepts that are there in the text if needed don't uh, make your don't waste your time if needed if a particular concept is needed for gate do that otherwise leave it and don't do that for all the all the subjects because each you have to treat every subject uh, differently like networks and the circuit and networks it largely depends on how much you have practiced because uh, all the theory in networks and systems or circuits and networks is like uh, yeah it is or the above average student will already be knowing all the theory so you can't get your edge on that you have to get your edge on the practice like everyone will already be knowing the theory the difference the difference will be in how much you practiced in subjects like networks and circuits sorry circuits and networks and uh, use previous gates to get familiar with the question models once you are familiar with the question models like i said you can start making standard operating procedures so that you can make use of the weaknesses in the exam if a pattern is repeating you can make use of the standard operating procedures to not think about the question and directly get the answer that you have to do because if you don't do that some other student will do and you they'll get a better they'll, they'll get an edge over you so make some standard operating procedure at least for the questions that are repeating in nature and analyze uh, every question model or something if you find something as new 
uh, analyze that and prepare shortcuts for that because the shortcuts are very important because you have you can't ideally think all the questions through and solve all the 65 questions by th thinking just by thinking you can't afford to solve all the question uh, in three minutes window if you are very strong even if you are very strong in your concepts and if you are very much uh, versed in all the subjects you can't just think and find all the answers all the 65 answers to the all 65 questions because some some of the process you have to automate like uh, if you see a questions from power system based on per unit don't read the question move directly to the figure start calculating the per unit values and then move on to the figure move on to the actual question which is being asked so that are some standard operating procedures which you need to adopt to solve questions which are repeating so you get an extra time uh, like you get an edge maybe 30 seconds edge on other students which are competing along with you and make use of the calculator that in that they provide the virtual calculator start using that in your preparation and you'll get to know all the things that you can do there because it takes time to get used to that calculator because that is a, actually a very complex thing i don't know who designed that you have to really uh, beat your head and you have to really uh, practice somewhat to get a hang of that calculator the virtual calculator that gate platform provides and uh, like I said, after solving the previous gate, you have to make more shortcuts. You have to analyze your uh, analyze your strategy. You have to imp uh, do uh, some things that you need to do in order to improve your speed and accuracy. And before I move on to speed and accuracy, I like to say that that is a trade off. Like you can't get the best of both. You can't be a very fast uh, solver solver of questions, and you can't be super accurate. Like if you are solving a question 100, if you are solving 100 questions in under half an hour, Naturally, your accuracy will be very low. But if you are focused on accuracy, you need additional time. You will require more amount of time rather than half an hour to solve 100 amount of 100 uh, questions. So this is something that you have to trade off. Like if you are focused on accuracy, you lose your speed. If you are focused on speed, you lose your accuracy. So generally, you need to do a, some judicious trade off there, and you need to arrive at the best combination of uh, speed and accuracy so that you can maximize your mark. So you need to optimize for your mark. Don't don't speed speed up too much and lose your accuracy, or and don't slow down too too much that so that you lose your speed. Uh, so that is a thing. And what I'll I'll tell you some general steps to Im improve your accuracy. So when you're solving problems, you'll find that you're making mistake in the same same kind of situation. Like if you really start to note down the root cause of your uh, silly mistakes, like the root cause of whatever silly mistakes you are missing, making making. You will, and you start to tabulate that data. You would uh, find a Gibbs curve, like a uh, Gaussian distribution. Like uh, the most, uh, the most, uh, the most common uh, mistake that you make will always be the same. For me, it was uh, this missing between uh, per phase quantities and three uh, three phase quantities. I always used to interchange that when I do when I'm doing calculation. So your uh, most common mistake will be the most uh, troublesome for you. So once you get to understand which are the most common area like that you make mistake for sometimes you might uh, for con in control system you might mistake the s for a five you might mistake that the s is a capital uh, the capital s is a digit five you might do that that was another common mistake for me and you might uh, like when you do the root lockers you might forget uh, the uh, when all zeros appear you might forget that or you might be too uh, eager to write the answer you might write the answer in per you might write the answer in kilovolts instead of per unit. So these are some things that you like uh, uh, the common mistakes that you need to be aware about and make a list of all the common mistakes. And once you get rid of the 10 most common mistakes that you do, you can save uh, uh, around uh, two to four marks just by getting rid of all the 10 most common mistakes that you do. And don't need to worry about uh, what other things that might happen. Like uh, obviously, even if you get rid of all the 10 most common mistakes, you will some other mistake will creep up. Don't uh, worry about that too much, but at least be content with the fact that you are not mistake making the same mistakes again. So that's the thing about accuracy. You need to be constantly aware about what mistakes you are making and uh, optimize for that. And yeah, uh, the, when you follow some notes, you will so people. So normally they'll follow the pre, uh, the model, the notebooks by the standard gate academies. Like they'll maybe they'll follow Medici notebooks. Maybe they'll follow Ace Academy notebooks. But keep in mind that all these all the materials provided by uh, whatever institute that you're following will be lagging by one year because all the models that they are discussing, all the examples that they're giving will be up to date up to the last year and it can't give you an edge in the next year. Maybe next year something new happens. So that is the importance of analyzing something because the more you analyze, 
rather than solving questions, the more you are ready to accept the unpredictability of the exam. If the exam is really easy, then whatever your analysis you have done might be a waste of time because everyone knows already how to do everything. Just your speed matters, your speed and luck matters in that case. But suppose for an exam is suppose for an exam is very tough. So that even though a lot of people have practiced so much, a lot of new questions are coming. Then the analysis part of your preparation would give you an edge. You can solve more difficult questions. You would get an edge over the other students. So I'm not saying that you should spend your entire time on analyzing new problems. You should ideally balance between that also. It is all about uh, optimizing all your efforts. Like with the least amount of efforts, you can get the maximum amount of marks. That's the thing. And as Abra Abraham Lincoln said, Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the axe, which means that, that you are writing the exam for three weeks, sorry, three hours just. Just the three hours is important, but you are preparing for a six month duration, which means you have to be really sharp and that three hours mat that six months matter more than the three hours. So uh, don't complain that the three hours was unfair for me. I couldn't, I do, I couldn't uh, like focus on the three hours. Some emotion uh, got to me. Don't complain about that because the six months that you prepare, or maybe the three months that you prepare from now on, are are more important than the three hours that you write the exam. So keep that in mind also. So I already talked about revision. How I how I did it, like uh, allot one or two days for revision and use the time. To recall the concepts, if possible, don't uh, don't look up, don't refer a book while you are revising. Just write down the formula from scratch. Don't refer a book. Take the results from your memory, if possible. Revision is recall. Revision is uh, recall, not uh, recognition. So keep that in mind and cycle through two or two or one subject every day. Like allot half an hour or fifteen percent of fifteen minutes of your time to go go through one subject every day. And short notes, I would recommend make short notes for someone who is who has a good amount of time with at their hand like if you are having uh, six months to prepare then make short notes but at the end of end of your preparation don't start making st short notes and uh, waste your time because that will that will not help you in the short term it will help you in the long term so you need to really need to make short uh, short notes if you are if you have like six or more months to prepare so from at this stage i don't think you should make short notes you, you should not spend your time on short notes if at all you need to revise something just you use highlights in your regular notes or oh, that is better and mock exams i already talked about uh, you can experiment your strategies in mock exam don't do experiment or don't do research in your gate during your gate in that three hours you should not do any research some students will spend their entire half an hour on once one particular questions don't be that PhD guy in your gate exam. You should keep things practical. And if you are not getting a question, you should skip that. That's the best strategy. And you can experiment with all these things during your mock exams. You can try out different techniques. You can get a hang of things like uh, how much time to spend on a hard questions, whether to skip in what sequence you need to write a particular uh, exam. You, need, you can experiment with that in the mock exam. So make use of the mock exam and analyze your strengths and weaknesses. Now, I said about balancing all these things because uh, uh, you really don't have that much time. So you need to balance everything. Don't go full on on everything. Don't do full on revision or don't do full on practice. Don't do full on analysis. Just keep a balance of all the things so you'll get an edge over other students. Optimize, optimize to the maximum. And uh, other thing I would say is be subject specific. Don't apply the same strategy to every subject. Like, uh, for example, EMFT will generally ask easy questions, but you need to cover a lot of stuff in EMFT. You need to get uh, familiar with vector calculus and all that. So spend time on theory while studying EMFT, spend little time on practice. But the opposite applies to networks, networks and uh, circuits and networks. You need to spend minimum amount of time on practice and maximum amount of time on, sorry, you need to spend minimum amount of time on your theory and maximum amount of time on your practice while you are solving questions for circuits and networks. So be subject specific uh, while you're preparing. Don't apply the same strategy to all the subjects because all the subjects are not the same. And while you are making a plan, plan in very vague nature for the next week. Don't plan in ultra high details. You need to plan in detail for the next day, but don't plan in detail for maybe the next month or maybe the next, next two months. Because what ends up happening is if you can't achieve that target by some chance, you'll naturally feel demotivated. Uh, incremental changes or incremental planning is always best for your motivation, also for your satisfaction. 
but you need to have a vague idea what to do what to do in the next month don't uh, don't ignore that part you need to have a vague idea for the next month you need to have an even detailed idea about the next week you need to have an ultra high definition idea about what you are going to do tomorrow so that's an ideal plan like uh, the more uh, future you the more ahead you plan the less uh, details you should include and uh, ultimately it's those three hours it's just those three hours that matters in your preparation so whatever uh, like whatever practice that you have been doing is like sharpening your axe so but ultimately it doesn't count when you're cutting a tree only that last two hours matters right so i believe that people in the top 50 or maybe even in the top 150 rank have the same level of understanding and almost the same level of preparation i would say i don't know for others but i would say that and the difference just comes in those three hours that three hours matter a lot so that the difference comes in those three hours and a lot of variables can come into play uh, during those three hours uh, for example your emotional state can come into play what confidence you have and what you revised the previous day might play an important role because that material that you imp uh, that you revised the previous day might be uh, fresh in your memory and that you can solve very easily so what you revised the previous day will play an important role in those three hours and which set of questions you solved will also play an important role and some people say that it's pretty much luck after the top 50 that it doesn't really depend upon your talent after the top 50 it's pretty much luck uh, i don't know if i would call it luck but i would like to see it like this okay no exam on this planet is ideal so part of your preparation is to increase your chances or to increase your luck so be aware that always there is a luck factor involved in the exam and the more you work the more luckier you will get like if you work for uh, if you work uh, if you put 600 hours into your gate exam or gate preparation you will get even more luckier and if you solve enough questions then naturally the chances are that two or three questions come in exam that you are already done with or uh, okay think of this in this way uh, your rank or score uh, depends on 95% on your work and 5% on your luck and the more you work the lower the influence of luck will get like if you work for 600 or plus hours to your gate preparation then only 99 only one percent of your uh, result will depend on your luck and the 99 percent of your work will decide your result and keep in mind that it's always be there however small the luck factor will always be there and uh, uh, that's all i have to say about gate exam and if you have to if you ask if you need to ask something about strategy you can ask right now and later i would uh, like to add some other things that people usually don't uh, care about or people usually ignore so like, i will add that later but right now if you have some questions about uh, uh, you know the gate strategy preparation strategy or how i should optimize for things you can ask right now uh, students those who want to ask a question uh, they can unmute themselves uh, those i have made a panelist so uh, i suppose uh, good morning, yeah good morning uh, so basically if uh, Firstly, that if uh, if I have particularly solved uh, problems of ten set and uh, and uh, so there was a big difficulty to that. Hello. Hello. Okay, I get your problem. Yeah, yeah, I I got your problem. Is it Hrithik Parate? yes sir yes sir okay uh, so uh, this is a problem of taking two hard questions like uh, while you are solving or while you are practicing a set of questions you can always take a set of easy questions or you can take a set of uh, average level questions or you can take a set of hard questions so what i would suggest is to take a set of medium or average questions so that you are not in your comfort zone but uh, you are not too far ahead in the advanced zone either stay do not stay in your comfort zone stay at the edge of your comfort zone but don't go out too far like you need to take a set of questions in which if you take suppose 10 questions you solve you take you can at least solve seven of them choose a set of questions in that in that level okay otherwise you will end up getting demotivated or you you won't get the best uh, results from your effort like you need to solve at least seven questions and you need to make at least three or two mistakes because you are actually learning from your mistakes you are not learning anything from your 
So whatever questions you did right, you are actually learning only some things from your mistakes. So choose yes. as you know, seven is to three ratio when you are choosing questions. Like if you are able to solve seven out of ten questions, make sure that you attempt you uh, like you are uh, not getting three 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 of the answers. And if you are finding that it is very easy, then you should actually not be solving that set of questions. Like if a student is getting all ten out of ten, you should not actually be solving that set of questions. You should move on to the advanced questions. Okay, sir. Okay, so stay in your edge of comfort zone. That's what I would say. Yes, sir. Sandesh, so, you have got any question? Yes, sir. Uh, good yeah. morning, sir. This is Sandesh yeah. Bhavre. Uh, yeah, good morning, Sandesh. Uh, there is a lot of sources available in the market. So, if you can, uh, if you can say the uh, tell the uh, basic sources that one should follow. If yeah, I have. Yeah, I actually have a list of the standard textbooks that you need to follow, but I don't think uh, at the time at the time like this with three months or maybe four months to exam, you should not uh, go and read start reading a textbook. But I will anyway give you a list of all the standard books that you need to refer, or even you can find so the list of standard books by just referring to a PDF in the website or something. Because, uh, but I will I will give you a list at the end uh, of uh, standard books that you need to refer. Other than the standard books, you really need a question bank of the previous gate. You really need to buy a question bank of the previous gate questions. You can either buy, buy it from whichever institute of your preference. Like you can go for Medici, or if you can go for ACE. I'm not uh, like an ambassador of these institutions. I'm just telling what f came first to mind. Okay, there are various institutes. I'm sure everything would be fine. You just uh, take a question bank of the previous gate, and along with that, if you have already prepared notes, just stick to the notes. Okay, if you are prepared reasonably good notes in your undergrad or along with your college, then stick to that notes. Practice more problems, and if you are finding something is not coming, like if you are finding some issues while solving problems, then refer a textbook or some standard books, and then note down the theory. Don't go. Don't think that you'll start uh, the theory. You'll first full on cover the theory. Because you're you're already the th advantage with you guys is already you are familiar with the theory, so you need to really get way ahead of your practice. You need to start your practice right away. And once you are not familiar with your something, if you are finding something amiss, you need to refer to the book and take a note of that. Uh, you can refer the standard books. You can use that as a material, or you can uh, get standard uh, notebooks from academy like. Handwritten notes of ACE or handwritten notes of Medici or handwritten notes of maybe Creatrix. You can refer that. They are available in the market. Of the photocopy, you can get from any of these. If you go to these uh, locations of this institute nearby any shop, you can just get a hand of Xerox of all this um, note, handwritten notes, and you can refer from that. Also, you can refer from text. Also, you can also uh, like uh, buy. Uh, like buy material from the institute if you prefer that, but it will cost you some bucks. You need to be aware about that, but that is also an option. But I would suggest that if you already have a well, like well written note, just stick to the note because uh, your note is the greatest thing. You can no other uh, book will transfer more knowledge than your note. Your note is always your go to. So if you have a good note, then uh, better stick to that. And you can always add stuff to your note. You can always look up something on the text and add to that note. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So if you can uh, tell about the, the aptitude in mathematics section. Yeah. So I didn't focus about I didn't focus on aptitude and maths because uh, for an for an engineer uh, that thing would be like a given. The level of maths and aptitude they ask is pretty basic. So you don't need to like the always the harder problems come from the technical side. So as far as an, uh, as far as if you have average or even slightly below average uh, reasonable uh, reasoning skills, you can pretty much uh, do the aptitude part because all the students who are getting reasonably good marks will anyway have 15 out of 15 in the aptitude section. So uh, I would suggest that don't cover don't refer any books like don't refer any theory books at least for aptitude just start pro solving problems and once you identify the patterns uh, just uh, like do more research for example if the aptitude can be divided into various parts like uh, uh, number theory set theory uh, ratios averages 
proportions, mixtures. You can divide the aptitude part into a lot of sections, uh, the numerical aptitude. And you can, uh, for the verbal aptitude, there is no bound actually. You have to cover the entire, uh, like grammar section, you have to cover the entire literature. So it's an open ended problem. There is never an end to the verbal section. The more familiar you are, the better. But there is, if you go on preparing for that, there is never an end. And the aptitude section just uh, do more problems. Don't refer, I would say don't refer materials, but you can do that. There are some students who do that that way. But I would suggest to just stick to problem solving and you will get the hang of it. Once you see the level of questions that come in aptitude, you will be confident that you don't need to refer anything. You can just uh, like get, you can get along with uh, just sticking to the problems. You don't need to refer anything. And for the maths part, I, I will suggest a book. Uh, it is Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Cray 6. That book will take a lot of time if you are covering everything from scratch. So better only refer to that book if you have a doubt. Because that is a pretty big book. You can't uh, you can't reason expect to reasonably cover that book in three months time. So you have a doubt in maths, you go to that book. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I see a lot of questions in chat. Yes. Uh, I yeah. suppose, uh, Ellen, uh, we have got very limited time because of our uh, academic uh, schedule. Oh, okay. Uh, what but, I will okay. Do is, uh, uh, I will uh, I would like to request all the participants to chalk out all the questions, and uh, if you pass out down to me, then I will send a detailed mail to. Alan and uh, later on he can answer uh, those things in writing because uh, yeah yeah, yeah sure. are, I suppose uh, uh, running around the same thing. Uh, however, uh, I have got uh, some uh, something to uh, show. Uh, mm -hmm. Alan, I would like to take a presenter right for a few minutes. Sir. Yeah yeah sure. Okay. Just a minute uh, so that I should not miss anything which I planned. Yeah okay. okay. So actually, uh, before the start of this, uh, I have prepared some questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I am looking at this uh, whether uh, I have missed all those points. I suppose you have heard most of the points. For example, oh, okay. the student raised. The, I will go one by one so that uh, student will also be aware of what I am talking about. So oh, okay. uh, first thing you talked about coaching, the importance of coaching and uh, the role of coaching. So that oh, has okay. also been covered. Textbooks also you covered a uh, lot many things because. Uh, importance of textbook uh, and uh, when to start reading from textbook and when you have uh, less time to available for the exam, uh, I suppose this is not a good option. Then testing yeah. and other things will work out. Time yeah. management, you clearly yeah. said very good things. When to start also, you uh, uh, focused on it correctly. Uh, when to attempt uh, this as, as far as uh, pre-final year students are concerned, it's a good opportunity for, for them to warm up before taking a drop or other things. Yeah. And uh, role of uh, previous year question paper also you highlighted. You gave a lot of uh, exam tips also. You suggested the importance of practice. And the most uh, important thing which I liked was uh, common mistakes. I don't think yeah. I have common mistakes. Sir. So that was really surprising for me. You highlighted it very well. And uh, yeah. uh, another thing was related to target score. Uh, I, I feel that everyone should set uh, some target score for him or her because that uh, that's where the level of preparation comes. Uh, suppose if I aspire to be uh, between uh, one to 100 AIR, so I, my level of preparation should be like that. So is it advisable or not? I really don't know. Okay, the target score thing. Okay, what I did is I just targeted a uh, rank below 100 so that was my target and okay. uh, the target uh, the target has the same ability to pull you forward but at the same time it has a uh, ability to pull you back also so yeah, that, be uh, careful uh, when you fix your target like that so yeah. generally what everyone would say is fix a particular number like maybe under 50 or something like that but i would say uh to outdo your best that's all like if you are if you think that you can score 100 if you are thinking that with a given amount of time and if with a given amount of knowledge or with a given amount of whatever skills you have you expect that you can get a re reasonable amount like if you expect that you can do uh a, get a rank of 100 then say maybe outdo your best that is get to uh op fix your like fix your target such that you can just cross that bar 
so that would actually be a little motivation for you and if you are like uh, you, that if you fix it like that then it won't it doesn't have a chance to pull you back it always will pull you forward because uh, you are trying to constantly outdo yourself so it will always constantly pull you forward and you some people like uh, fix uh, based on their peers like if you are in a peer group of very competitive students then you naturally your expectation or target score is very high so that can work in both ways either it can pull you forward it can pull you backwards so be very mindful about all the effects of target score if you fix a target score it can work both ways so be mindful about that when you fix a target score and but generally people should people what people say is you should fix a target score and it's always uh, easier to throw an arrow or to bow an arrow at a fixed target rather than a moving target if you have a moving target it's not uh, easy to shoot arrows so fix a target score fixing a target score would be the best strategy but be mindful about its effects uh, next thing you highlighted about mock test and other things making self notes also you highlighted it uh, yeah. now the question was whether uh, we should prefer group study or alone because oh, that... really there is a lot of practice when i visited iit delhi long back i have seen for preparation of ies uh, exam or upsc exam they prepare in groups and that help them a lot in hostels or particularly where the students live in a close community so uh, uh, during okay. the walk itself uh, in the, around the corridors they speak out certain things and they improve themselves on those skills yeah so ideally it should be a combination of both you should actually uh, study it alone and you should actually study a little in combined manner like if you study something alone and then you com uh, combine your powers then other people who might have studied something else will point out that oh you missed this and this or oh, this is there on these questions did you solve these questions and there's a better way to solve this so you'll be getting constant feedback so that's the important thing about studying in group but it should not be like that you are on only studying in group your own uh, you can't so study on your own it should not be like that or either uh, uh, you should actually spend time alone and spend time in group as well do both and get the benefits of both worlds like if you spend alone you can be highly efficient at whatever time you are spending like you can maybe you can cover a particular topic in one hour if you are studying it alone and maybe you can do the same in one and a half hour if you are studying together because you need to attend to each other when you are studying together also so uh, get the best of both worlds by doing both things uh next question was regarding about success mantra what is your success mantra okay uh, for gate the success mantra is consistency and previous gates is too important so previous gate you have to solve definitely and be consistent at whatever small things you are doing if, if you are sitting for one hour a day be consistent in, consistent at it and make incremental changes don't uh, full on don't make uh, so like don't make drastic changes in your routine because usually that will never stick in the long term you will uh, always relapse to whatever thing where you are doing so make incremental changes and be consistent at it and uh, you focus on hard or smart effort uh, so there is a difference between them so yeah uh, do you yeah. already heard? another thing yeah. i was focusing uh, this time was uh, corona is an opportunity to prepare at home i suppose because uh, the burden of physically going to colleges and other thing has reduced and uh, the syllabus also has been reduced to the best of my knowledge for a lot of courses yeah i feel this is a proper time when they are sitting at home and now they can spend their time and their time management can be better so corona has come as a boon for them actually to the best yeah. of my knowledge because so, when I, go to, okay. I don't know i may be wrong you clarify yeah, i like to co comment on that yeah. like corona has made the gate this gate whole gate coaching industry a level playing field like uh, earlier it was the case that only people who could afford or people has the opportunity to go to coaching or spend reasonable amount of time in coaching could uh, even get a chance at these exams but corona has made that a level playing field everyone at home actually today no one is even attending a coaching class everyone is uh, doing it online so it has made uh, it has made the students it has uh, made a situation such that everyone gets the equal amount of chance it has made the playing field level so you can now uh, focus like you can do online coaching or you can take materials online but these kind of resources are available to everyone it is not just constrained to a particular group of people you can everyone can do that so it has uh, evenly distributed the resources among students so i think this year uh, i think we would see a drastic change in the gate results 
I think even people, more people who are doing uh, gate preparation without coaching will come forward and they'll be getting a good, excellent, uh, remarkable mark or a score. So I think that has a Corona has that effect. I'm expecting that. Yeah, my subsequent points were related to this only role of online stuff because that has increased now too much. Uh, now the people are referring the online uh, platforms for uh, getting technical know how. Otherwise, I have seen a lot of time uh, these web resources were not utilized for a uh, technical purposes. Yes. And, yeah, uh, that is and the role of NPTEL lectures, how would you rate them? Uh, uh, NPTEL lectures, I would say it is like it will, uh, it, you will get more knowledge than from a textbook, that's for sure. But at the same time, you need to spend more time also. So uh, the lectures, I think if you are an above average student, you can directly move on to the questions. But if you are not that, like it depends on you actually, because NPTEL, you have to, uh, like you have to give a lot of time in NPTEL. Whenever uh, what I do is I'll search up a topic in NPTEL and then I'll do just that video if I'm finding a doubt and I'll do that in 1.x. But usually what the NPTEL videos will be very slow because then they, they need to make sure that all the students get it. So if you are an above average student, you might feel it. It is a little bit uh, slow. The lectures are a little bit slow. So you might need to speed up the playback and you might need to take notes also. Uh, if you are going for NPTEL and don't uh, don't devote the entire subject to NPTEL lectures, just uh, refer to the important lectures there. Uh, don't do a subject in whole because that will cost you a lot of time. If Actually, possible, stick to the notes. From one uh, objective, because uh, I have seen a lot many times uh, during foundation subjects, uh, mm -hmm. if uh, the teaching is not so good or I have not got uh, anything out of that uh, offline teaching in colleges, mm -hmm. then uh, certainly. Uh, where are the uh, stuff where I can learn the things? So that way I was thinking that for students, those who miss particular subject as a foundation yeah. subject. Yeah, so definitely. That, this, that will act yeah. as a good reference. And yeah, this is a unification of uh, knowledge. Uh, what has been observed is that uh, the teaching style of every teacher is different. Uh -huh. so I have learned uh, network theory under some professor. So he taught me not many good things, no doubt about it. But at the same time, other subjects, I was not able to get those many good things. So I was mm -hmm. thinking that uh, professors which are there behind this NPT lectures, uh, they can, uh, they are giving those tips or the basics which are uh, very relevant and uh, rightly tested and justified also. Otherwise, uh, sometimes uh, wrong knowledge also percolate like anything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Lack of, uh, let us say, uh, skill of the faculty itself. Yeah, that, that's so, a uh, I'll tell you one example. Uh, when I taught uh -huh. at NIT Nagpur also, so even the uh, 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 faculty member who was teaching a particular subject, uh, he or she himself has not cleared the gate exam. Oh, okay. And, uh, that uh, question arises uh, that uh, the focus on the teaching of that particular subject, will it help uh, that uh, the students for uh, uh, competing in this uh, exams where the numbers are too large because uh, long back uh, 20 years back uh, uh, teachers used to give very basic knowledge and the usage of that particular knowledge in a conceptual basis but nowadays since all those things are already available on net so what is the use uh, in learning those similar things and on working on so those similar lines when i don't get anything different from offline teaching oh okay uh, so I can comment on this thing that the teachers themselves are not gate qualified. So this thing usually is the case in uh, whatever coaching institute that you go. Usually the teacher that takes a particular subject is only like uh, well versed in that particular subject. And if you ask him any other subject, he will not get he will not be getting the hang of it. So usually yeah. the, uh, the teachers who are actually very good in a particular subject might not be that well versed or might not just he might not he might know the basics, but he might not be that expert in uh, the other subjects. So uh, if you go to like uh, teachers, uh, a particular teacher might be good for one particular subject and a particular other teacher might be good for other subjects. And usually what I find is the younger teachers uh, who are just qualified or just uh, got out of college has a broad range of like knowledge, but they are not too expert on one particular thing that their teaching suffers. Like uh, they are per perhaps not too experienced in teaching. So they know the the stuff but they can't con uh, convey or the transfer of knowledge is not happening so i i see two classes of teachers like that and uh, i specifically ask because i know you are an isc vendor so oh, okay you might have seen the faculty there because yeah the fact uh, 
Okay. If I remember IIC Bangalore, I have gone through a subject electromagnetics itself. I was mm -hmm. surprised why at post graduation level once again I am learning Coulomb's law. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was taught by Professor G R Nagabhusna, uh, who was uh, basically uh, technical advisor to Kasturi uh, Nandan, uh, mm -hmm. who was related to some testing at CPRI related to this uh, lightning related studies. So uh, what what was my intention is that actually. Uh, uh, the faculty which you observe at IITs and ISCs, uh, as you rightly said, younger generation, yes, young faculties, they know a lot many things, uh, but still, uh, can we uh, uh, get those type of expert uh, understanding of that particular basic concepts? So, uh, that's why I remembered ISC today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and the uh, faculty is uh, very, very important uh, because uh, time is limited. So, that is... Uh, yeah. What a need of mentor and importance of mentor. Some in yeah. your life also, I suppose, uh, uh, some mentor would have been there, uh, or uh, whose uh, blessings I will say, or is there whether it is required or not? Please highlight on that. Actually, uh, need of mentor. Okay, you should have a role model, like someone you aspire to become or someone you aspire to follow. Uh, some uh, some students have a mentor like uh, they can constantly get in touch with people like that or can constantly get advice you all can uh, like approach me uh, when you need an advice so some students have that i basically like i didn't have a mentor as such but i always followed the toppers when uh, whenever a topper releases a video or whenever a talk with a topper is coming i usually used to follow that and i used to follow their stuff and i aggregated that into my like strategy for preparation and i optimized here and there and like no person will be ideal you can say like but you can you can get the good things from their life or their preparation and focus on that uh, don't look at the bad things from their life or so a mentor i would uh, i suggest would be really good thing like uh, can for you can like if for motivation also you can depend on your mentor or for any other uh, strategy based doubts you can fo uh, focus on your mentor so it will give you an edge definitely and uh, I suggest that you like you talk to your faculties also and you get in touch with them also because they have already seen the facets of all this technology and all the uh, theories, all the things related to that. So they will know more. Definitely experience counts. So you should they should they will also know more. Definitely connect in touch with the faculties, connect in touch with the uh, the uh, like previous toppers, not just me, the other toppers as well from previous years. Or just uh, uh, connect with touch with someone who you aspire to become. Maybe some uh, guy like your relative in a PSU connect in touch with them and ask how his work. So you'll feel motivated to do something. So you can do that. You can try that. Uh, this I asked because uh, I remember correctly. See, uh, I have got something else also to show. Uh, these are the list of books uh, which is there on the net. Uh, they recommend various books, but I remember uh, my mentor used to say that uh, refer some books like in control system he always focused that better you if you get time read a bc quo for a state variable and uh, ogata for a very good concept on controllers or something like that so yeah. the importance of those uh, particular books see i can see that uh, some of the online stuff also they point out on the same thing uh, that modern control system sh uh, textbook uh, should be referred to ogata nagra gopal or so so okay i can uh, hear this nagra gopal but uh, very few people are there who can mentor properly that uh, you have to refer some other books also by Ogata or Diazo or Hoppis or like that. Uh, particularly for getting uh, true insight of that particular subject. So, yeah. so I asked this question because some of the, my mentor in my life also, he uh, pushed me towards that side because he was knowing it. Otherwise, I would now never, never have known it because uh, all students will agree with me that uh, sometimes I get surprised that even after completion of final year, when I asked them, do you know the author of this book? So they said, nah, we never know it. So this is an irony of the situation that uh, the textbooks or the some reference books, which are they are very popular for uh, getting very good conceptual aspect because of commercialization of books, uh, they have, they don't know the, even the names like electrical machines, edge cotton is there. A lot many examples can be given like that. Oh, okay. So uh, what I I what I did is I usually uh, referred to books whatever the faculty in my coaching institute told, and okay. I referred that books and I, it's I agree that a lot of books uh, all the books are written, written keeping different things in mind. For okay. example, if you take Bimbra for machines, you can yeah. see a lot of worked out examples. So 
that book focuses too much on examples yeah it can be a good thing it can be a bad thing so a lot depends on the approach of the textbooks how it is written and so, bimbra the target audience is uh, i think uh, second year engineering students so it's written in that level of understanding and not too much focus on electromagnetic field theory has been given like uh, it's all yeah you can say that or yeah it's written in such a way that uh, the second year students can understand this and some areas has been left, left out or some other has been included some areas they're just glanced over so each textbook will have its own uh, like uh, merits and demerits so i uh, you should keep one or two textbooks uh, at least the pdf versions with you so that you can go through the topics if not the if it's not there in one text you can go through the other text and a lot of the things that we like uh, learn nowadays are a little you can say outdated like uh, to go for machines also there are advanced electrical machines right now and they don't they no longer manufacture all these things just as we learned it so you the, the textbooks might uh, might some textbooks might focus on that some textbooks might focus on the conventional way of uh, doing things so it lot a lot depends on my book and personally i can't comment on each textbook because i have no experience like uh, dealing with all the textbooks because i was just optimizing for gate and i really didn't cover a single text uh, like 200% i was re referring topics here and there i, I didn't do that, uh, justice to textbooks so i really can't comment on textbooks but uh, as far as i know uh, uh, some few textbooks uh, people generally go to that i can be uh, like that i can comment about and so uh, yeah, for books, uh, I think Bimbra is a good book for machines and power electronics. Yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, you can go, you can get a lot of examples on that, and a lot of questions you can get. That's what I'm. I would say, for yes. maybe the explanation is not up to mark. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I can't really comment on that. Okay, thank you, Ellen. I suppose uh, we are uh, falling short of time, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to request all the oh, panelists yeah. to just make their videos on for taking a snapshot, if they can. Much thankful uh, for the complete session because uh, it aroused the interest and uh, at one particular point of time the number of uh, participants uh, gone up to 154. Oh, and, okay. uh, I would like uh, to uh, thank uh, this Ellen because of such an interesting session you will be wondering that the students have asked so many questions and he has clarified a lot many things and the recordings will also in future will help all these students. Yeah, I hope so. So, uh, over to HOD, Electrical Engineering. Uh, Madam, one minute, just a minute. I'll, uh, your uh, voice is not audible. Alan, Alan, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, thanks, ma'am. Right. In future also, we will ask you to interact with our students because most of the times what happens due to generation gap or what, I don't know. But students are listening to you only. That is uh, mm -hmm. of your generation and uh, mm -hmm. they won't listen to us they are uh, saying just ki wo ye to bhashan de rahe aisa, like that okay. so uh, congratulations and thank you once again that you have motivated our students and really if the students will get uh, some score valid score due to this motivation it is uh, very very means that credit will goes to you only yeah thanks ma'am Thank you. And thank you. Thank you everyone for the uh, like opportunity, like all the faculties and especially Dr. Sunil. And I would like to thank uh, uh, Ma'am Prama also. So, uh, and all the other faculties who I didn't, I forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone in general. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, I would be in touch with you for. Uh, for yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you, thank you all for your presence. Dear students, thank you. Your classes will continue after this lecture as per your schedule. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. All the best students. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nagrani sir. Achha kiya. Madam, kaafi detail mein discussion kiya unhaan har cheez clear ki. Thank you. Totful. Yes, yes. He has covered everything. Recording mein aapko baad mein har cheez ka bachho ka clarification hua hai. So that is, I suppose, one of the assets of the department. Absolutely, exactly what the children will hear. They will hear every thing. And the two points that I have already made a slide, I have already made a slide. So that is part of it. Thank you, sir. Next target is AIR-1. It is 2017. It is AIR-1. I hope so. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A few days back, I have had a contact with him. 
शिवम सिंह करके हैं दो हजार सत्रह के हैं सर हाँ हाँ अपन करते बात ये क्लासेस कर लेते बच्चे है ना थैंक यू